Have you ever felt the pain of having to put down your own brother? Twice? Because I have. I also know what it's like to be put down by that very same brother. Hurry up, God! <laughs> Life is pain, and so is this game. Wow. Project Zomboid is a survival game, but it's not like an actual survival game, because you're not actually going to survive in this game. Ah, we're gonna die! Right? Right! Ah! In fact, the opening title screen reads, This is how you die. Now, if you don't know what Project Zomboid is, picture it like The Sims 1. But you can drink bleach. Or die in a car accident. All the while getting severely depressed. Bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. Oh yeah, I guess there's uh, zombies in it also. At face value, this game appears to be very simple, likely due to its graphical style. But I can assure you it's anything but, and instead is one of the deepest survival games I have ever played. It's too deep. Uh, ah! Recently, this game has seen a massive hike in popularity. It's been concurrently pulling more active players than Battlefield 2042, which I know that's like really not that big of an accomplishment at the moment, but still it's pretty cool. This is likely due to the recent release of Beta 41 and the inclusion of multiplayer. I will soon experience complete oneness with an interconnected global community of game warriors. So naturally, I wanted to grab some friends and hop on this bandwagon. Also, by the way, if you're wondering, uh, my wife got me a pickaxe for Christmas, uh, so we're not going to use the talking stick that we normally use, and this is going to be a pickaxe video. Sorry for the good quality, you're welcome. But in this video, I'm going to break down all the mechanics in the game and explain why I think Project Zomboid is a very worthwhile experience. So immediately after loading to our server, I quickly realized that this game is not easy. In fact, I wouldn't even call it hard. I would say it's another tier above hard. It's just a brutal butt for misery itself. That honestly never seems to let up. So, why do I like playing it so much? I got the power now! I'm doing good in the game, so I'm doing good in life! As soon as you think you're safe, you realize you're not. And as soon as things start working out for you, something goes terribly wrong. Usually because of zombies. And yeah, there's a whole lot of zombies in this game. So the game starts you off by spawning you in a random house. Any smart player who's played the game before knows that the first thing you should do when entering a game is get your ass to the TV, pop a squad, and start watching the scheduled programming. I'm not joking, I swear to God. If you watch TV, you'll get free XP, but we'll, we'll explain all that later. After TV time is over, you need to start looting. Now, there's a whole lot of rewarding moments in life getting your dream job, or marrying the love of your life. But honestly, these all pale in comparison to finding that item that you've been desperately searching for. Hell, I would put finding a sledgehammer, or you know, even a pickaxe, pretty cool, right up there with seeing the birth of your firstborn child. Okay, maybe that's like a, a little bit of hyperbole, but uh, you get it. It feels really good when you find good loot. But even if you find a kitchen knife, or you're lucky enough to find a baseball bat, you are going to die. Like, a lot. Combat is pretty challenging at first, and it's all too easy to get attacked by zombies. And the reward for getting injured by zombies is straight up dog Listen, punk. To me, you're nothing but dog shit. Do you understand? A lot of things can happen to dog shit. So basically, zombies can assault you in one of three ways. Either a scratch, a laceration, or a bite. And once the zombie has inflicted its trauma, you have a chance of now getting sick, and turning into another dead asshole aimlessly wandering around wanting to eat brains. <laughs> The chances of turning are as follows. 7% for a scratch, 25% for a laceration, and a full 100% for a bite. And yeah, did I mention how easy it was to get hurt by them? <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> My last character had a really good run. I killed over 500 zombies. But, while absentmindedly fighting a big horde, I stumbled into a small tree and got a laceration on my right hand. 
A couple hours later, my character began to feel agitated. And shortly after that, they began to panic. This isn't a good sign, by the way. Because a little while after that, it happened. Oh no. What? You're... Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. As soon as you see the queasy moodle, it's over. You'll be dead in a couple days and there's nothing you can really do about it. Like, the game's tutorial does a really good job of uh, explaining this, where at the end of the tutorial it tells you if you get bit that all you need to do is take the antidote by hitting Q. Yeah, Q is actually the shout button, which causes your character to scream out loud, calling all the zombies over to you. And they did this to let you know that there's no hope in the game, because there is no antidote. Which I kind of hate, but like, I get it, because if there was a cure, then there wouldn't be a zombie apocalypse in the first place, right? So it's, you can't really be too mad about that. But yeah, zombies suck pretty hard. So, how do we kill them? Oh, 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 shit. You shot me in the dick. Oh. Well, there's a lot of ways to go about this. You can stab them with a fork, or you can shoot them with a high-powered assault rifle. But one of the best ways to clear a whole city out is by building a campfire. Yeah. Simple campfire. You just want to make campfire? <laughs> I sh you not. This is like one of the best ways to actually do it. All you do is build a little campfire, go scream at them for their attention, and once you get a couple lit on fire, just kite them around until you're leading a parade of burning dead idiots. Eventually, they'll all die. And you'll be free to loot about the open world cabin. This game truly offers a plethora of ways to go about killing all the zombies. But obviously some are better than others. One way that I don't recommend is hitting them with your car. Thinking we need to act. <laughs> or your neighbor's car that you hotwired. Because this almost never works out for good. One of the worst positions you can be in is trapped in a car that won't start because you just kept running into things, and now you're surrounded by a massive horde of zombies and simply can't get out of the car. So your two options are try to get out of the car and die, or starve to death because there's no food in there. And it's weird that I have to say this, but you don't want to die. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. A lot of games really don't have that big of a penalty for dying, but Zomboid is not one of those games. You're forced to start a new character. Because when you die, you pretty much lose everything that you've been working for. Let me explain. Your character can level up in 25 different skills, and once you die, all those skills are set back to zero because you are forced to now start a new character. So imagine how happy I was after spending three hours of real life time taking headlights out of cars and putting them back in, Also, I could be a better mechanic just to die because I fell over a fence and I got attacked by zombies. All that time, all that grinding is now wasted. And getting skills is not that easy. Depending on the type of skill, there's different ways to level it up. If you want to be a carpenter, then just find a hammer and a saw and go out there and dismantle everything that looks like it's made out of wood. Just don't stop taking stuff apart until you're good at it. And soon you'll be building entire houses in no time. If you want to get stronger, then spend half your day doing push-ups. But be careful because if you exercise too much, you're going to get sore and you won't be as effective in combat. If you want to get better at hitting things with a bat, then just go out there and hit stuff with a bat. Leveling these things up can be a grind, like a really long and tedious grind. So thankfully, we can read. The library's got a lot of books. I like the ones about history, advanced pyrotechnics, firearm techniques. Because XP ain't hard when you have a library card. By reading different books, you don't really get any XP, but you'll get a multiplier. And having a multiplier really speeds up the process. There are five books for each skill, and reading them dramatically increases the amount of XP you'll get per action. But finding them can be more challenging than Thanos putting together his Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, ah, ah, ow. Ah, ah, ah. But trust me, it's very worth it. You'll end up with like a 12x multiplier at the end of reading all of them, and that is invaluable. Now I mentioned the first thing you should do is watch a little TV. The reason for that is because three times a day for the first week, the Life and Living channel runs shows that will give you free XP. 
and they say TV rots your brain. But the guy who's hosting the Woodcraft show who refuses to take his shirt off is showing me how to build stairs. Woodcraft levels up carpentry, but what I really want is I want to see him with his shirt off. He keeps teasing it and I hate him for it. Just show me them nips like fuck, man, come on. Quick side note, YouTube doesn't rot your brain either, so just keep watching my videos. And if you really want to live a long, happy life, go download ExpressVPN using my link below. Okay, quick ad over. See how harmless that was? I'm really good at doing these. Outside of skills, we have traits that your character can have. And these traits truly shape you at your core. But there must be harmony there. If you choose a bunch of positive traits, you'll have to counterbalance them with negative traits. So if you want to be a fast learner with thick skin, you might also end up being an obese smoker. And if you couple all those traits with the mechanic career, you can truly role play as my abusive uncle. Yeah, don't ask about that one. F you, Uncle Kevin. I still hate you, by the way. It's really hard to explain all the things you can do with all these traits and skills and not have this video be like an hour long. You can forage for berries, you could build a house, you rebuild a whole car using parts from other cars, you build farms, there's also fishing and trapping for outdoorsmen, there's power and water systems that you'll need to build if you want to make it past a couple weeks, and the cooking system in this game is one of the most in-depth cooking systems I've ever used. I'm just trying to quickly cover my ass because I know when hardcore players of this game watch this video, they're gonna be like, oh, you didn't mention this or that in the comments, but I kinda just want to respect everybody's time and not drone on about things like the caloric value of most foods and why katanas actually aren't a very good apocalyptic weapon. But anyways, there's a lot of ways to build your character, and there's a lot of ways to die in this game. Most of the time, it's not from zombies. A lot of the times, it's from eating rotten food, or cutting yourself so deep that you bleed out. I've seen my friend set himself on fire more times than I can count on one hand. And now that you understand how easy it is to die, and how intricate the character creation system is, now it's time to go ahead and talk about Hell, aka Kentucky. <sighs> Needs to be attractive! I'm sorry. The map for this game is f massive. Driving from one city to another is not an easy trip. Every time I do it, I feel like Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead. You get this real travel feeling when you pack up and move to a new, unfamiliar location. My favorite town is Riverside. It's a cozy little town on the edge of the Ohio River, and I almost always spawn there. There's just such a sense of community there, and I don't spawn there all the time because it's one of the easier cities. That's definitely not why I do that, like at all. However, I am a small town girl with big city dreams. But like most people with this aspiration, I almost always get chewed up and spit out after moving to the big city, literally. Louisville is by far the biggest city on the map, and calling this place hell is an understatement. Sure, there's tons of places to loot and set up base, but with that comes even more zombies. Side note, and I think I brought this up in another video, but does anybody else get bothered in like movies and TV shows when they don't call zombies zombies and they call them like walkers or some other BS? Just call them zombies. Stop being dumb. I, <laughs> I don't really know why I get triggered by that. I just do. Back to Kentucky, though. The game starts you off on July 9th, shortly after the infection started. At this point, this is the best shape that you'll see the world in. The power is still working, and so is the water. But not for long. After about two weeks in-game, both the water and the power shut off. So in those first two weeks, you really need to figure out how to survive long-term. But that's if you make it that far to begin with, which, to be honest, you're probably not going to for like a while. Furthermore, after about nine days, there is the infamous helicopter event, where a helicopter decides to follow you around and bring zombies from miles around to your location. Run! The choppers! There's some great memes on the Project Zomboid subreddit about this because it's stupid. Why are you following me around? Get the f out of here. I'm trying to survive and you're making it harder for me. 
But anyways, the world evolves as time marches on. After months in-game, buildings will have more and more erosion, trees will continue to grow, the temperature begins to drop as winter approaches, and vines start making their way up the walls of buildings. And godspeed if you make it to December. This game is hard enough without things like snowstorms that end up freezing your character to death. But the attention to detail and the way the map develops as time continues in-game is incredible. If you don't act quickly and prepare for the utility shutdown, your character will eventually die of dehydration. I don't need water! Water's for quitters! Or because there's no power, your fridge won't keep food fresh and you'll die of starvation. I feel like I'm eating donkey's <laughs> But what is really great is the game doesn't really tell you how to prepare. Instead, you're forced to make these decisions on your own. The lack of direction makes you feel like you're unraveling your own story, because you're in charge of your own destiny. There's no hand-holding, and there's no quest to do. So if you end up dead, you're the only one to blame. But if you end up dying, you kind of beat the game, right? Congratulations, you are dead. As mentioned earlier, the game starts with telling you that this is how you die. And sure, there's a lot of wrong ways to play the game, but I'm not necessarily sure there's a right way to play it. Because regardless of how you play it, the game is certainly going to be an adventure. And me and my friends had a really great time unraveling our own stories. Some of my favorites being the one time we led a caravan of six vehicles all the way across the map in order to move our main base to Louisville. The journey wasn't, you know, completely successful. Slow down, Woo. Shut the f*** up. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Hey! Uh, oh, we've got a crash. Oh, uh, we got a crash, oh, and we got gosh. naughty words being said. As my friend Zetum died multiple times, because he's an idiot and he does not know how to drive. Zetum, help! Is that your car stuck? Yes! or follow directions, and it was a terrible idea having him drive the medical van because as soon as we got to our new base, we had to kill a whole lot of zombies. And after a couple of us got hurt in that battle, we didn't have anything to patch us back up. All right, the medical van is f***ed. Good job, Zetum. That was awesome, you did phenomenal. It's also hilarious seeing how many times Woot will die in a server because for some reason, he just doesn't understand combat or how to run away from zombies. I made it. All right, pull in, pull in. Oh, that's you, sorry. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> he, he's the worst, but I just love Woot so much, I don't know. Or when me and my friend Duffy drove across the map, only to get into a car accident that left both of us injured, so we really couldn't fight, and we just kinda ended up getting eaten alive outside of a gas station. Which really should have never happened in the first place because Duffy got bit before we even left, but he didn't tell me for some reason. Make sure you medical check your friends because they could be lying. They could be zombie bombs just waiting to happen. Don't trust anybody. But these are just a few stories from my multiplayer experience. Honestly, it's been the most fun I've had gaming with the boys in a very long time. The game and its internal systems are so deep that events rarely repeat themselves. So if you end up dying multiple times, it's almost always something new that killed you. This keeps Project Zomboid feeling fresh because you never know how you're going to die. It might be as simple as a massive group of zombies. Or it could be that you fell off our roof while setting up rain barrels to collect water. That's how I die? That's how I die? Good job, Wayne. Now we don't have a carpenter because of your carelessness. Honestly, there's only a handful of things that I don't like about this game. Like, one of the biggest problems I think I have with the game is that if you're taking apart a car and you take like a door or a tire off the car, it automatically goes into your inventory. This causes your character to be overburdened because they're carrying like a big ass car tire. So when a zombie sneaks up on you while you're working on a car in some parking lot, your character tries to run away holding a whole ass car door instead of just dropping it. It just makes more sense if when you take a door off a car, it's just, it lays on the ground. Why am I holding on to this damn thing? I always thought that was dumb, I don't know. I also think that, you know, the movement and the combat are a little clunky at times, but you get used to that relatively quickly. These aren't necessarily problems with the game, they're more so growing pains as you learn how the game works. Project Zomboid is an enigma of sorts. Much like The Sims, there is no winning, there's no final victory, and there is no end credits. The point of Project Zomboid is 
to die. The excitement of the game comes from your accomplishments before that sweet embrace of death inevitably takes you. And because there is no reset, the pain of losing your character and all the time you spent with them grinding is a really tough pill to swallow. But that's the beauty of it. In a game like this, finding a can opener can feel like winning the lottery, and surviving a close brush with certain death triggers an adrenaline rush. And this is because you know what's at stake. So even the smallest victories, like eating a rotten cabbage so you don't starve to death and live to see another day can feel empowering and also give me the little hope I need to continue my journey to the grave. I wish nothing but the best for this game, and I hope it continues to succeed. So people all around the world get to feel the same despair I do when doing something like taking a turn too fast in my car and crashing into a light post, or opening a closet door. Because Project Zomboid doesn't really teach us about the pain of death. Instead, it shows us how the little victories along the way make life worth living. And I think that's beautiful. Thanks for watching. All right, quick end cap. The GTA Trilogy video actually got age restricted to 18 plus, so it's not getting views anymore, which really sucks because that was a cash cow for me on this channel. So I kind of hate to do this, but if you really want to support me, I have a Patreon, I'll put the link below. And also you could use ExpressVPN because I get money through that too. Making these videos isn't easy, I'll be honest, but I hope you like the pickaxe. I hope you subscribe and I hope you keep watching the videos. I'm just, I'm, do, I'm doing my best, okay? God, I really hate chilling stuff. I'm just gonna leave. Do whatever you want, go have fun. Wow, what a great video. <laughs>